Hello, class, and welcome to Chapter 2, Section 4, where we talk about chemical reactions. So a chemical change, first of all, we need to talk about chemical properties, and we're just going to review a little bit um, what a chemical property is. Chemical properties are the ability of a substance to undergo a specific chemical change, and the chemical properties can be used to identify the substance. They can only be observed when a substance undergoes a chemical change. In a chemical change, the composition of the matter will always change and a new substance will be made. So for example, when we burn something or it rots or it rusts or it decomposes or it ferments or explodes, the composition of the matter will change into something totally different where a new substance is made. In a chemical reaction, one or more substances will change into one or more new substances, and the substance present at the start of the react reaction is called the reactant. And that's really important to remember. The substance produced at the end of the chemical reaction is called the product. So in a chemical reaction, we start with reactants. That's the substances we start with. Through the chemical change and through the chemical process, we will end with totally new substances being formed called products. So for example, if we take coal and add in oxygen, and they burn will give off carbon dioxide. So that's an example of a chemical change or a chemical reaction. We have coal as a solid, adding it to oxygen as gas or carbon, I'm gonna say, so we, we, we're taking coal and we're using the carbon, we're burning the carbon plus the oxygen and we'll give off CO2, carbon dioxide as a gas. The two reactants are the coal and the oxygen, which will be broken down into carbon and O2 elements. And the one product that's being formed at the end is carbon dioxide. Recognizing chemical changes, there's four clues to recognize a chemical change. And you'll need this to kind of complete that um, physical and chemical changes Google activity that you're working on for this unit. If there's a transfer of energy, if there's a change in color, if there's a production of a gas or a formation of a precipitate or a solid at the end, those are four clues that tell you it was a chemical change. So transfer of energy, a change in color, the production of a gas, or the formation of a precipitate or a solid. The transfer of energy is when every chemical change involves some sort of transfer of energy. For example, heat as a transfer of energy, um, you know, grilling this meat, this piece of meat, a color change when you mix two substances together and the product has a different color to it, that would be example of a chemical change. The production of a gas. So let's say you mix two substances together and bubbles form. Those bubbles are the production of a gas that's being formed or the formation of a precipitate. Let's say um, we're mixing two substances together, and at the end, a precipitate will be a solid that's forming and settles out of the mixture, and a precipitate has formed here once we mixed these two solutions. That formation of a precipitate shows us that there was a chemical change happening. If you observe a clue to the chemical change, like one of those four we just described, um, you cannot be totally certain that a chemical has taken place because the clue might lead you to a physical change. So for example, when you boil water to make bubbles, you need to check the composition of the matter before and after to see if it's changed. In order for it to be a chemical change, the matter composition has to change. Conservation of mass. During any chemical reaction, the mass of the products will always equal to the mass of the reactants. That means whatever you start with will equal the total mass at the end. We call that the conservation of mass. Um, you know, the, the reactants could be oxygen or another gas that's been given off, but whatever you start with, the amount has to equal, the amount of that substance has to equal 
the amount of the products that you end up with. Mass also holds constant during physical changes. So for example, when you melt 10 grams of ice during a physical change, 10 grams of liquid will be produced. The scientific law that reflects these observations is called the law of the conservation of mass. It states that during any physical change or chemical reaction, mass will be conserved. It's not just disappearing. There, whatever you start with at the beginning, you're going to always end with the same amount of stuff, of mass, even if it's changed substance. Mass is neither created nor destroyed. The law of conservation of mass also states in this way that the mass of the reactants always, always equals the mass of the products. You can never create matter or mass, and you can never destroy it. So for example, if we have two water molecules, two H2O, it will be broken down into two hydrogens, diatomic elements, and two oxygen. So if we see here, we have 36 grams of two waters, well, four grams of hydrogen and 32 grams of oxygen. So the conservation, whatever we start with in grams, will always total what we equal with at the end. And that's the end of this section. Thanks for listening, guys.